Today we're going to be talking about boxing news and we're also going to touch on the unfortunate passing of Tim Haig. Welcome to the D.O. Boxing Show. I'm your host, Damon Aposio. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. And uh, on this uh, particular episode, I just want to talk about some, you know, general boxing topics that are going to be, of course, um, relevant right now and uh, on the world scale and definitely local as well. Um, so congratulations to Shaquille Finn, who uh, recently had a victory. Um, he's continuing to excel and uh, I look forward to catching more of his fights in the near future. Um, congratulations to Tony Lewis, Michael Brandon, who were also victorious uh, June 17th up in Cornwall. And uh, that was Live Co Promotions' second event in Ontario, which is great. It's always great to see uh, different promoters coming out of the woodwork and working in the province of Ontario at the uh, May 27th. Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame dinner, Alan Tremblay also mentioned that Orion Sports Management is going to be back doing professional fights here in 2018. I'm looking forward to that as well. It's, um, it's a fantastic opportunity now for a lot of the professional fighters in Ontario to get more activity. If you haven't got your tickets, don't forget to get your tickets for An Evening Under the Stars. This is going to be uh, an event as well. So it's in honor of uh, the late Eddie Mello and it's going to be $75 a ticket and it's aboard the Empress of Canada. There's going to be a lot of people from the boxing community there. Um, it's going to be a night of music, entertainment, food and uh, the Empress of Canada, if you haven't seen the boat before, it's about three floors. You don't feel the water and it's going to go for a couple hours. You're going to have the entertainment. It's an opportunity to network or be entertained and the money goes to a great cause. Um, it's going to be going to help young amateur fighters as well as victims of homicide. So if you haven't got your ticket, make sure that you do. Um, there's a number 416-897-5861 where you can get your ticket today. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on in this episode was uh, about the tragic um, circumstances of the passing of Tim Haig who uh, fought in Edmonton recently. Um, so he fought on the fight card on June the 16th, 2017, uh, and he passed away as a result of his injuries. Um, I've seen and read a lot about the circumstance, and um, first of all, I want to say my condolences to Tim Haig's family. Um, it was a terrible situation, and, you know, uh, right now, not a lot of people know what the full circumstances are. Uh, I'm sure the full uh, gamut of all the factors that were involved will be revealed over time and um, and everybody will have a clearer picture at that time. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of issues with this particular situation and it is that a lot of people start to weigh in, a lot of people start getting involved um, in the sport of boxing that you know weren't really there, don't do their homework and even people that um, call themselves you know experts or journalists in the sport um, they don't do their homework and, you know, unfortunately sometimes they get the airtime to, um, to say things that, you know, they may not even be aware of. Um, there, there's a few things I found interesting about this, the circumstance. And one was that, you know, in Edmonton, um, they're doing a fantastic job with boxing. They're putting boxing back on the map. Um, you know, Jelena Madrinovich as a fighter has spearheaded that and, there's a lot of great fighters out there. Um, I don't know the promoters personally, but I know that they've put on a lot of great fights as well, putting boxing on the map, which has been a great thing. It's keeping the athletes employed. It's, um, you know, giving hope to people that are in the amateur gyms out there. And, you know, in, in, uh, in that respect, it's, it's um, creating a way out for a lot of people that may not have other ways or other... Um, things that they're doing so you know in some senses with boxing a lot of times it takes a lot of people off the streets um, or a lot of people that could be doing other things um, so you know first of all congratulations to the promoters that are out there 
Um, and this is an unfortunate circumstance sometimes that you can't avoid. People sometimes pass away in the sport of boxing. It's, it's um, not only a sport, but it is, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's an activity where people can get very seriously hurt. Uh, same as football, um, you know, same as skiing. A lot of people have died during skiing. So there's nothing um, more lethal or less lethal than many other sports in the sport of boxing. However, because the goal is to, um, you know, beat your opponent either by outpointing them or rendering them unconscious, um, it lends itself to a lot of sometimes criticism um, and, you know, sometimes unjustly so. Um, there, boxing definitely has undergone this kind of scrutiny before and a lot of times people often look towards what is the solution then and I would say that the solutions are already there the methods are already in place I look at it much towards uh, like the law for cell phones on the road now yeah cell phones came out it's a very um, distracting device uh, people have been killed because people have been um, you know, distracted by their cell phones. Was there a need for a new law? Not necessarily. There was already one on the books for distracted driving, careless driving, and dangerous driving. And, you know, um, while it's an issue, you know, people also create accidents from using their makeup or eating food uh, and getting distracted by those things. Um, so I, I find it to be um, a similar comparison where um, does there need to be new things on the books? Does there need to be a national commission um, to prevent these kind of things? I don't think so. There's already things in place, but there's a lot of irregularities and things that don't happen. There's a lot of things that don't happen by the book when it comes to boxing. I personally know of promoters signing medical forms on their own. I personally know of fighters taking fights um, you know, on reservations that and, and not having it show up in their record books. I know of, of fighters going uh, and doing smokers, and uh, which is basically unsanctioned uh, fights. And, you know, I, I know of a lot of fighters that, you know, are using um, substances that, you know, it's not really going to assist them with the sport, they're just taking these things recreationally and they can cause damage to them internally, to their body, to their mind, to their brains. So there's there's a lot of things when it comes down to, um, you know, what should be happening is, is basically the enforcing and, and abiding by the rules that are already there. There are safety measures that are already set in place, but when people are circumventing those circumstances, that's when issues can occur. When it comes to Tim Haig, um, you know, I heard uh, a report on the news, and this is the interesting thing too. Where was the media? Um, you know, when when the promoters are doing the right thing, where's the media then? Where is the media when um, you know they were promoting these fights? The media plays a huge part in terms that it can assist, you know, the promoters in making making money, and, and they should assist them when they're doing the right thing. Um, but, you know, the media has their own agenda as well. There wasn't a lot of coverage about the fighters that are doing the right thing, that are living the right lifestyle. You know, um, a, a fighter that I don't know very well, but looking from afar, looks like he does all the right things, Tony Lewis. You know, where's, where's City TV, CBC, City TV News? Where are they in terms of covering him? You know, a gentleman that's a family man, um, doing the right things. Um, you know, his promoter is working in conjunction with his family, and um, they're fighting uh, tough opposition, preparing in the proper way. Where is the focus on that? No, the focus is somebody passed away, Tim Haig. Um, people aren't unsure of the circumstances. People don't do the research, and they just want to come on with their agenda. CBC, CTV, City TV News. Um, anyways, about uh, Tim Haig. He was a grade four English teacher in Edmonton. Um, he taught in the Beaumont, Alberta area. And um, 
you know, from all reports is that he was a, a very beloved teacher and, um, and the students looked up to him. And, you know, if I was a student, I, I would look up to my teacher too, a male teacher that is a, a former UFC fighter. That's an amazing thing. Um, I think it's very cool. Um, so, you know, if you're looking uh, also for more information on Tim Haig and um, the Edmonton uh, fight card, uh, make sure you go see Boxing News Canada. Um, they carry a good range of, um, you know, news articles and information on Canadian fights. Um, so Tim Haig was uh, a former MMA fighter. He got cut from the UFC in 2011. His MMA record was uh, 21 wins, 13 losses, with 15 knockouts. And um, so he had a, a quite extensive MMA background. Um, he had been knocked out eight times as a, a professional MMA fighter. Um, and I don't know how those knockouts came, but, um, you know, that's uh, those are things that could have also possibly contributed um, to... You know what occurred I don't know um, I can't particularly say when it comes to boxing he has a lot of experience he has a lot of experience um, in striking um, some people were saying that he shouldn't have been licensed as a boxer and um, you know I know a lot of uh, fighters with a lot less experience a lot a lot of amateur boxers with a lot less experience that have turned professional and done well as uh, professionals his last fight as a professional boxer before the June 16th fight was against Mladen Milhas. Um, and uh, sorry if I didn't say your name correctly, Monster Mladen. And um, uh, it was on that was on December 6, 2016. And um, he lost that fight by technical knockout. Um, you know, at that time, he was uh, one and one. Uh, so he had two professional fights. And so did uh, Mladen. Mladen had... Um, uh, either uh, one or two professional fights at that time. Oh, sorry, I think it was two professional fights at that time. So they both went in even evenly uh, with two professional fights. Um, and um, uh, Tim Haig lost by a uh, technical knockout. Did he take the allotted time? Off. Was he put on suspension? I don't know. And um, yes, after you've you've lost by a knockout um, or technical knockout, you should take a little bit of time to recover, depending on, on how that came about. If it was a body shot, you definitely won't need as much time recovering uh, mentally as you would if it was um, a knockout by a headshot. Um, but the other factor is, too, in, is sparring and what happens in sparring because a lot of damage sometimes can occur when it comes to sparring um, with the fight on June 16th um, Tim Haig who was 1-2 as a professional was fa facing Adam Braidwood who's 7-1 and one. Um, again not a, not a, that doesn't seem like a mismatch to me in terms of their records and um, during the fight I watched the fight twice um, when Tim Hay got knocked down, uh, I could definitely see that the referee was talking to him and assessing him each time and making sure that he could walk towards him. Um, you know, refereeing is a tough job, and a lot of times it's one of those jobs where you're going to receive criticism regardless, whether you stop a fight too early or, in some people's opinion, stop a fight too late. Andre Ward recently fought um, Sergey Kovalev a second time um, this past weekend, and a lot of people felt that you know it was stopped too early on uh, and on what people believed was a low blow, and um, a lot of people said Tony Weeks didn't do a great job. Well, just before the stoppage, the announcers that were announcing the fight were saying that Tony Weeks was doing a phenomenal job. The other thing too is. The referees don't catch necessarily every angle when they're inside there. Again, tragic situation. Um, I know people are really trying to break down the fight between Team Haig to see what was it that could have been done. And I agree, there should be a review. 
Um, there should be an assessment of what's going on. I didn't see that the official really did anything wrong. Um, is you know, looking from from an armchair quarterback's view, you could say that he could have stopped the fight a little bit earlier. Um, but again, it didn't look like he really did anything wrong. Um, and that's just my own personal opinion. You can agree or disagree. Um, but yes, there needs to be a review. I'm sure there's going to be an assessment of what occurred. Um, I really feel sorry for all that all the people that were involved, you know, um, because all of this is going to come under a microscope and, um, you know, as it should, but um, there's going to be a lot of finger pointing. So, you know, condolences again to the Tim Hank family. Um, you know, Adam Braidwood, I don't feel that Adam Braidwood did anything wrong. Adam Braidwood was, was very gracious at the end of the fight. Um, and, you know, he was very respectful, I believe, as well. And um, this is one of those tragic things um, that sometimes happens in the sport of boxing. I'm going to leave things at that. Um, you know, you're welcome to leave any comments. Keep it classy. Um, if you're going to leave comments in the, the comment section, um, when it comes to a national commission, um, I think I'll touch on that in another time. And um, remember, you know, if you, if you want to ask us any questions related to boxing, you can send us a message through Twitter or um, at DOKPOSIO through email at posio at hotmail.com. And uh, don't forget, you can subscribe as well to our YouTube channel to get every episode of the DO boxing show um tragic circumstance i want to shed some more light um give some more information on it and you know hopefully this um you know gives a little bit more information to people it's not this is not a, this is not something that's occurring every day in the sport of boxing um but it does occur and when it does it's a tragic situation and it's something that you know everybody can learn from um but we all have to do our homework with regards to the situation, each and every situation. Each and every situation is not the same. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Appreciate you tuning into this um, this particular episode. And, um, you know, I'll catch you on the next one.